This mug is actually incredibly true for today. I only did one landing. Good afternoon, if you're at ground, Scott, 55206. What's up everybody, welcome back. Yesterday I woke up after a challenging couple of weeks and decided that I wanted to knock something off of my bucket list. And so I looked at that list that I keep on hand and decided yesterday was the day that I was gonna fly out to the NASA shuttle landing facility and do the low approach. So today I'm gonna talk you through the flight and share how much it costs. Let's go. 55296 five, exact ground. Exit ground, 296 over at Romeo 7 tie down with information hotel. I'd like to request flight following over to Tango Tango Sierra at 3,500. System 296, copy all. Are you ready to taxi? Affirmative. System 296, Romeo 7, taxi via Echo 4, crossing the wrong tree. So to get things started here, I fly out of Orlando Executive probably about twice a week, and so I'm pretty familiar with the taxiways and runways here. Listened to the ATIS, did my run up, realized that we were probably going to be taking off runway 7, contacted ground, and got my flight following out there for TTS. While it's a short flight, I probably could have just flown out there. I know that there is traffic by Space Coast and Melbourne pretty frequently, so if you can get flight following, why not go ahead and do it? Keep in mind the time here too, so anybody who flies in Florida, 3 p.m. is typically on the back end of thunderstorms. Another reason I chose to go ahead and just get out there to the low approach and mark this off my bucket list today is because the heat is normally unbearable and we normally have thunderstorms. This was a very unique day. I had to take this great opportunity to go fly, especially if you don't have weather. Music like Tower, Skyhawk, 55296, runway 7, Echo 4, ready for departure. So it's 55296, exec tower, eastbound departure, out of below 1,100 until further advised, runway 7, cleared for takeoff. I was approved for takeoff for runway 7, and I was given an eastbound departure. I did need to stay outside of the Bravo, so I stayed right around the traffic pattern until I got my frequency change over to Orlando departure, which was shortly after takeoff, actually. Got over to Orlando departure and was clear to the Bravo. As you can see right around the stadium, I did think about starting to cut in south a little bit, and the only reason there was because of the Biflo Towers. Uh, right when I passed the antennas, I did get another frequency change approval and was told to go ahead and pick up the weather at Space Coast Regional. I was also told that runway 15 was most likely the runway I was going to have. They gave me the low approach, and so you can tell there that I started to kind of plan for that. I was eventually swapped over to tower. 55296, five, Roger that. Remain in the current squad code and uh, change to the tower there, 128.55. Swap over to tower, 128.55, thank you. At the tower, Skyhawk 55296, five, about 8 miles west, inbound for that low approach with uh, Space Coast weather. Who was that, uh, 896 calling? Skyhawk 55296. Five, Skyhawk 55296, five, uh, NASA Tower. Okay, and what's your position currently? Uh, eight miles to your west. Skyhawk 55296, five, reported two mile right base, runway 15. The wind is 120 at 10, zero, altimeter is 3010. Zero, what I was also doing in this time was making sure that I was aware of what the airspace looked like. I had already done my pre-flight and I had double checked. I was doing another check, double checking where airspace was, what I was probably gonna do once I left, especially climbing out of that runway there and uh, essentially decided since I'm going back to Orlando Executive was going to be basically falling around almost as if I was doing closed traffic on TTS and started that turn in between Space Coast Regional and Dunn. So the tower, as you can hear, gave me the 100 feet or above low approach, cleared for runway 15. That's the tower, Scott, 55296 on the two mile right base for one, runway 15. Scott, 55296, runway 15, cleared low approach at or above 100 feet. Clear low approach, runway one five, at or above one hundred feet. Nine six.
CS does ask, where are you going? What are you doing after you leave my airspace? I decided to go back towards the Dunn in north of the Space Coast Regional Airport. And as I was leaving the airspace, I was switched over to the same departure frequency. I swapped over. I wanted to go ahead and get flight following again. Easy to pick it up. Uh, they gave me my same exact squat code I had as I floated TTS. I was told to expect runway 74 Orlando executives. So asked if I was familiar with Stanton power plans and the Bithlow Towers. It was a pretty beautiful day out, so I did get the airport in sight, probably a little farther than normal, and so I let them know I did. They gave me tower. Sure enough, I did get that left downwind for runway seven. Exit tower, two hundred six, entering that left downwind for runway seven. Five five two hundred six, runway seven, clear to land. Runway seven, clear to land. Five five two hundred six. So unfortunately, my GoPros did die coming in for a landing, so right around Baldwin Lake. So I didn't get to actually record the one landing I had for this. It was an amazing experience. I think it's a great time to practice slow flight, staying on center line, expecting any kind of crosswinds, communications. There's a lot of stuff to be taught, and it's a great experience. So if you're a student, go ahead and ask your CFI, see if you can go out and do that, especially if you're in the Orlando area. If you're a private pilot and you're flying around and you get to rent planes, go try this out. I would recommend bringing someone with you because they can actually take the pictures and enjoy the experience as well. For me, coming out of Orlando Executive, with it being such a short flight and only one landing, it was only $179. So in the grand scheme of things, it's pretty cheap. That's all I got for you guys for today's flight. I did mark off another bucket list item for myself, and it was only $179. You guys can do the math there. That's not a lot of money. Over two months, that's probably utilities. If you want to spread it over 52 weeks, we're talking dollars. If you like the video, go ahead and press like. If you want to see me go and fly anywhere else, go ahead and let me know. Throw out some suggestions. I am still flying all over the state of Florida, maybe even farther if I found a really good airport, and I will happily record and tell you the flight's all about. If you want to come back for any kind of aviation, lifestyle, travel content, go ahead and press subscribe and the notification bell. And I hope you guys have a great weekend.